Well, I wanted to get outside a little bit today because we can't just stay indoors and we also want to explore drawing in nature. Very often when we look at a finished drawing in a museum or in a book, we see very much a precise uh, finished piece and that's what we try to emulate. But what we really need to learn is how to build up the underlying structure of that drawing. Uh, the drawing doesn't start out to be finished, but very often students when they're first trying to draw try to make a finished drawing and then because it doesn't look so perfect get discouraged. We're so concerned about getting that finished product because that's all we see in the museum or in a book. We see the finished product but how do we get to the end product uh, to begin with? So very often students try to make a finished drawing right away without building up structure first and that's what this week is about. It's about structure and the importance of basic shapes. When I talk about basic shapes, I'm talking about circles, triangles, squares, rectangles, kidney beans, macaronis, very basic stuff. And we're going to try to look at things and objects in nature and in our everyday world and break them down into the basic shapes and forms. The human-made world is very rectangular. The frame of this video is rectangle, the paper I'm drawing on is rectangle, the windows are rectangle. The house is a rectangle, there's a triangle above the door, the car is kind of a trapezoid and a rectangle with some circles for tires. We want to see basic shapes. In nature, it's a little bit more tricky to see the basic shapes. But if we start out in drawing by finding these basic shapes quickly, we can be much faster at getting a drawing done. So when first starting to draw something, Look for its basic shapes. Don't get caught up in the details, like the fine needles of a fir tree. Look for its basic overall shape and, and sketch that in very loosely. And then start to sketch in the basic shapes of the objects around it. And then you'll begin to build a composition very quickly, rather than focusing on micro details in that object. The Mona Lisa is considered one of the most famous paintings in the world. And let's not discount its beautiful psychological power but let's start with its basic shape. It lives in a rectangle. That's the most basic shape. That establishes the frame, the context, where this image will take place. Then within that rectangle is another basic shape, a triangle or a pyramid maybe. That establishes where the object or the subject lives within that frame. It might be tempting to break down the composition in terms of, well, there's a head, there's a neck, and a torso, and so on but we're looking for the overall structure relative to the frame. Then we can begin to find the oval for the head. Maybe then we can look for maybe other shapes such as a square for the neck, I would say. Uh, the shoulders look like a sloping pyramid. And then maybe a square for the body. From that, we can build out uh, the details. We're so concerned with getting attention for our drawings or having it look good or something that we forget to build up the basic shapes. And da Vinci was very concerned with geometry, the underlying structure of things, their basic shapes and basic relative geometry. And that's what we're going to focus on this week. All right, for your first exercise, I'm going to ask you to draw basic shapes. I'm going to flash in front of you on this video several objects, maybe even only for five seconds, maybe a little longer. I might throw some tricks at you. Your job is not to make a museum quality drawing. I don't want you to get in there and try to get around the outline and be all careful. I want you to be very loose. I want you to be very fast. And I just want you to capture that basic shape, whatever it may be. It could be a circle, it could be a square, it could be a little more complex, but I want you to get it as quickly as you can. The object of this exercise is to help train your eye and your hand to determine what the basic shape of an object is very quickly 
so that you can begin to build larger compositions later on. Thank you to John Gibson for the jazz drums for this exercise, and have fun. Oh, and when you're done, I'm going to ask you to do it a second time, only this time, use your opposite hand. I'm serious. All right, have fun. One, two, one, two, three.